Okay, uh, okay. So I'm gonna cover the slightly different thing. I think it's also very relevant, and I'm like surprised every day by the amount of people who like don't kind of have that like into their steps. So it's like the same goes. Like there are like two types of people in this world: the people who do backups and the people that will do backups. Like as soon as you like kind of lose like a lot of data that you didn't really realize that would be gone at any moment, you kind of start figuring out, oh, I need like. To, to come back up with this stuff, otherwise it might be lost at any moment. Like many, many things can happen. Like your drive can fail, like your your laptop can be stolen. Uh, some you can make a mistake writing some script and instead of doing like um, RM uh, dot slash, you do RM slash, something like that. Like, there are many, many ways in which you don't realize like you can lose a lot of your stuff. So I'm gonna kind of go through kind of the some recommended guidelines and some kind of pitfalls that you can end up doing even if you are like doing some sort of backup and you think you're kind of doing it. So one thing that you can like you will see mentioned a lot of the time is kind of the three two one rule for backups. So this kind of uh, kind of the spirit of like you need kind of the recommended way of doing it is like you need three copies in two different mediums. One of them being offset. So what this is kind of teaching, or like, like saying, is like you don't want to put all your eggs in, in the same basket. So the the main idea is like, let's say I I have like a hard drive where I'm making like weekly backups. If if I don't have that uh, a, you need to it needs to be a separate drive. It's you're making just backups in a separate partition in your same machine. And your machine it's stolen or something like that, you are still going. You need like kind of two different devices, be it this, be it like a server, where you need kind of separate servers. And the second thing is one of them at least needs to be offsite. Because like you can still have like a separate hard drive that you store in a drawer in your room, but uh hold not, but like if the hard, the house burns down, again you just lose all your eggs. Like like that. and that's the only thing you don't need. You don't want to be happy. So, kind of the recommended strategy says have one kind of copy, like on site with you. So, like that's really convenient because sometimes downloading stuff from the internet can be really expensive, both in terms of money or in terms of time. So, like, for example, like a lot of these like backup, like cloud services will be fairly slow if you want to suddenly download all your data. So, it's kind of convenient and something that you can quickly access and something that can be there just in case. Then even if you cannot, even if you have all of these, there's still common pitfalls. I think like one of the most common ones is you need to be testing that your backups are working. Like it's not enough to just kind of blindly trust that the script that you wrote is like, like it's like it might maybe outputting all these files to your terminal is like oh nice it's backing up, but like who knows maybe the server you're backing up to you don't have permissions and the data is being copied the things in the output. But when it goes to write to the server, it's not there. And when you go to recover your data, the, the data is not there. And there are like many famous stories. I think one of the most famous one is the Toy Story 2. The movie was almost lost, like for this very same reason. Like someone accidentally deleted it, like the entire movie that was sitting in the server. And when they went to the backup guys, they were like, oh, it, the, the backup was not properly configured. We don't have your data. And it was just like some coincidence that some employee have copied the data to work from home. That they could like salvage the movie. So the way you should be doing this is like when you do a backup, every so rarely try recovering data from it to test that like it's properly working. It's one of the things that, that you should take into account. And the second thing uh, to take into account is that uh, having a mirror is like um, mm, you need to be testing the. The other thing is mirroring is not a backup. Like if you are just making an identical copy for your files somewhere else, and this is kind of the same reason why like you will hear people say that like great striping, like having two disks that kind of mirror each other is not a backup. And this is because if you delete stuff from your from your from your home disk and everything is being sent and all the changes are being propagated and you don't have any way of making the snapshots, making versions. There are many ways like data can be corrupted, like your disk 
maybe still working, but like some sectors may be corrupted, you don't haven't realized, and that will be propagated to, to kind of the, the backup solution that you have, or maybe some malicious software just kind of replaces like a bunch of your files with MP5 files are still there. But like you just suddenly kind of push those changes. And that's what a lot of cloud services like Dropbox and Google Drive do, where they kind of keep around files for a while, but they're the, the remaining need is like a mirroring solution. So if you kind of trust that in the long term, it can, can come back to bite you because like they only keep stuff for like one month or something like that. So you want to use something that kind of you have like two files and you have like, like you have, let's say like at some point in time T1, you have files AV and at some point in time T2, you have like files PC, you want kind of your backup to kind of have versions with like, oh yeah, like I have AV and I have PC. Like if I want to go back in time, I can record A and it's not lost. Along with this, one thing you want to be doing is the duplication. So this, this kind of versioning system can become really expensive if you do it kind of naive. You just make like an entire copy of all the files that you care and transfer it every single time. You're just making a copy, you're going to end up with a lot of programming information. And again, like some of these uh, services might be expensive when you start like copying files and files all over again. And then it just starts upon on this thing called symlinks. A symlink is like a file that is saying, oh, like, don't mind me, go this like somewhere else to figure, like, to figure out where the file really lives. There's a similar thing which is called hardlink. A hardlink is just like in the same way that you, like a file is just kind of a pointer to some place in the disk where like some like a bunch of bytes live. You can have like instead of having this setup, what you can figure out is like oh this this B thing is served between these two. So what you can have is like your version one is pointing to like, I, like you have A and B, and your version two is pointing to B and C, and that way you only store B once. So, and the nice thing about also about handlings is if you delete any of the pointers, you can, like all the others still work, which is, is really convenient. And kind of the last thing, kind of the last large point to touch on is encryption. Unless you control like all the servers where you're kind of storing your backups, think about that maybe your code is not sensitive or your or your photos are also like not sensitive, but there are like so much stuff like your taxes, your like social security number, that you might not be comfortable with uploading to some random and trusted third party in the cloud that might be like snooping your data. But again, the thing is with very little effort, there are tools, and I don't know where you cannot list uh, some of them now, that can simplify this for you. Like, we can have this exact same setup where instead of, I can have like my client can have some key, like some secret key, and instead of storing A, B, and C, what I, like in simplified terms, could be inserting is like an encrypted version of A, an encrypted version of B, and an encrypted version of C. This way, the server can be storing this data and without the key, which is everything is kind of encrypted in the client side, they cannot read my backups. They will just have like some random information and without the key, they, will, they won't be able to read. And this is kind of compatible with the deduplication scheme. So you can still make these incremental changes over time and they will just be seeing like random stuff. Some kind of extra considerations, I think you may really want to look in. Like, you might not want the same backup strategy for your data. Like, it's maybe you care more about like, your documents, like your passport or like your taxes and stuff like that, and maybe your photos. Maybe you are fine only having like one copy of your photos instead of like three. Uh, there are like also software that will allow you to make a bootable version of your system, so you can make an entire copy of your disk. So if kind of your, you lose your cloud volume or like the disk, the hardware fails, you can replace that and boot directly from it. So you can have like an entire copy of your, of your disk. 
And that covers most of it. Uh, any questions so far? The last thing I wanted to touch upon, and this is something that is becoming more and more common over time, is that uh, you will be like there's a high chance that you will be using a bunch of web services, and they will be storing like some of the data that you care about, like have like this realization when I was using Spotify for a while. At the very beginning, it doesn't really matter. But over time, you kind of accumulate, like I was accumulating a lot of playlists they really care about. And if Spotify tomorrow decided they lost the right, and for some reason they haven't backed it up properly, uh, all my playlists work out. And I have no way to kind of fix that right away. And that's when kind of looking on like all these services, like for example here, have Insta Paper because Spotify is slightly trickier to back up will you kind of have to think about the data that is living in all these web services and how to kind of back it up just in case. So for example, a lot of them, you can go to like things settings and you have like export as a CSV file. And like this will look like, yeah, so you just download a file to my computer and I can open this in some like text and like I have all my data and like I could all the stuff we saw from Dota Wrangling, you can parse it and you can record it. So you, you, you still have kind of that peace of mind. Uh, similarly, kind of the other thing that you may care about, I think this is something I, I learned about some time ago, it's really good. Like sometimes you really like some content that is on website, but it's not really easy to kind of back, uh, back up a website. Uh, you can always kind of save like all the files to your computer, but then it's not easy you want to kind of share to someone else. So there's like this awesome project which is run by the Internet Archive, it's called the Wayback Machine. And it allows you to kind of submit pages and like they will take a snapshot and store it like for, for, for posterity. And they have many, like have petabytes of like saved web pages like of all the information. So for example, if we type some um, like the EMDB, you can see like all these maps that they have taken over time. And like if we go to like 2001, have all these maps, for example, this, why is my program? It takes a while because like they're not like using kind of the fastest infrastructure for this kind of stuff. But like for example, like we have seen like the, what the, what the web crawler took of the AMDB in 2001. And like you can look and like sometimes maybe a web page <coughs> that like someone has linked to is like not there anymore, but you can come to this web page and maybe someone has already take, uh, taken uh, a snapshot of it. And the same go goes the other way. If you have like some like web page that has some, that, some stuff that you link to people often, you may want to back it up. They just offer you like you can, for example, if you go back to the main page, like you can type here ndb.com, for example, which is like backed up to that, but like it will take a snapshot of the page that it is right now. This won't work for like dynamic content. Like the, the kind of, it's, it's not a static web page. It, like if it's a dynamic web page, it will only save like a static snapshot. And you can also kind of tell it to kind of save like PDFs, like for example, like it's linked a PDF or linked an image, they will also save that. And the same goes, for example, for like MIT Cloud, where for example, this is the distributed systems cloud. You can see that like a lot of um, snapshots of people have taken over the, over the years, and you can just go back, and this is like sometimes convenient. Like you can see, they, they always link to previous years. You can see like this is kind of what it was in uh, 2001. And I think those
So, so what do you, what do you, you guys use? Back oh back? yeah, yeah, I forgot to mention that. Yeah, I think we linked that in the, I link that in the web page. Um, If you want like all the features, like I don't know how to like set it out, like like deduplication, encryption, all the stuff. Think Tasma, and like you also want kind of some remote, but like because you don't have like servers in the cloud, like you don't want to like set up your VPS and secure this kind of stuff around an entire cloud. Like if there's computing a server and like some other stuff, that is can be tricky. Um, so Tarsana is a really good uh, kind of default solution that you can you know, use. This is good for saving stuff that is like not media, like you don't want to be backing up large amounts of kind of photos or videos because the price can be it might can become uh, more expensive for that. But like for kind of simple files, it can be really efficient. It does kind of the same framework that we have covered here. Of like it figures out the data, it figures out the like the deduplicates what are the new things, then it compresses, then it encrypts it with like a client side key, and then sends that to Tarsna. And if you configure it properly, you can even configure it in a way that not even if someone gets a hold of your computer can delete the 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 backups because you can only append to that instead of kind of overwriting or deleting. If you don't want something that you can control your own, there's like an open source a tool called Borg Backup, which pretty much does the same. The only thing is you do need to figure out what remote or like where are you storing the data. And that's this, for example, the, the one that I use, just have like a server in my friend's house in Spain, and like I just back up to that. And the, it allows you also to kind of mount, like you can like mount views or like all these different views into your file system and navigate them and like recover files from there. And there's slightly simpler tools where you kind of have to implement the rest yourself, which can be more inconvenient. Like Rsync is just like a remote copying tool where you will figure out like between the remote folder and the local folder only the things that have changed, like transfer that, but like it won't do the snapshots, for example. Like you do that, that it won't do that for you. And it won't, do, it won't do the encryption, which can also become tricky if you don't implement it correctly. And Alcron is kind of a similar thing. Alcron is convenient if you want to be backing up to, say, Dropbox or to Google Drive. Uh, Alcron is kind of like a command line utility that works like Arsync, but allows you to configure kind of all the API stuff so you can copy files and read files from like Amazon S3, Dropbox. Uh, Google Drive, all these remote cloud servers that by default don't allow you to kind of SSH and copy files over SSH. Anything there? Yeah. So just can you just tell me what's wrong with the following setup? This is what I'll let you. I just put all my Git repos inside of Dropbox, even though people say don't do it. I've always done that, and it's amazing. And then literally everything I ever do on my computer is just in the Dropbox that MIT pays for. And then big files, if they're images, they go on Google Photos, and I'm like allowing them to do whatever they want with my, that's my privacy of choice. And then the, all the other data I have is like crap that doesn't really change that often. So I just have it copied on like a couple of disks. And I don't really have to do anything because that data doesn't really change. So your private SSH keys, for example, go in Git repositories in Dropbox? No, those are just, those are just saved on- Saved where? They're saved on my Git repo. Which is in Dropbox? No, they're just saved on like a, yeah, so I have a, I have a private key that hides all my private key files that are stored on Dropbox. And where's that private key stored? That's just on like a couple of flash drives. On a couple of flash drives? Yeah. Okay, so that seems like the start of a problem. <laughs> really? There, you, you could no, I mean, I, I have my private keys encrypted on flash drives around the place too. Yeah. Um, the, so there, there are a couple of issues you run into. One is you're basically like trusting everyone with your data. Uh, if you're willing to trust people with your data, then it is trivial to do backup. Like there are tools that let you do like full disk backups and then everything is safe, but you're uploading all your files. 
Uh, if you're willing to do that, then backup is very easy. It does mean that you'll backup a lot more than you might care about. For example, I don't include my Git repositories in my backups because they're already in Git, right? Yeah, they're no, already I, pushed I, somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I totally get this. So, so my concerns are more things like doc files. Um, I backup uh, all of my email. I download to my machine and then include in my backup because I, in case my like email provider goes away um, or I stop trusting them for whatever reason. Um, all of my cookies from my browser, I back up. Um, uh, in addition to that, I back up uh, just like uh, various like scans of passports and stuff that I don't want to leave in Dropbox. Those I also keep in encrypted backups. Um, yeah. So it really, de it, it comes down to trust, right? Yeah, it like, sounds like this is a joint security and backup. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. If, if all you want is backup, then that is trivial if you're willing to trust people with your backup. Although the thing that kind of like like Dropbox does in Australia is not like like it can be become an issue. Like Dropbox in a way is mirroring. Like if you change a file and you want to recover it all later, they won't keep that around forever. Like they will probably keep it around for like a month. So, so to, to, to take an example, um, if if you do worry about security, imagine that someone steals your laptop. Can they delete all your backups from there? And is that a threat model that you worry about? No, because Dropbox saves your history. I don't know. I don't if know if I have your laptop, I can delete the entire version history from Dropbox too. You can delete uh, even the history? Yeah. Yeah, you can. You can. You can I, yeah, I can you wipe can. your Dropbox account. Like I can delete your Dropbox account by going into like drop the browser. Yeah, not, sure. Not with Dropbox. That's fine. I have your laptop. I can do whatever I want. All right. Well, that's just a password issue, right? Okay. Where do you store your passwords? Somewhere that's accessible from your laptop? But it sounds to me like this is a security but like the No, backup. no. Well, yeah. I mean, yes, you're right. All of this is about security. Um, if all you care about is backup, it is trivial. All you do is just mirror your entire disk to somewhere online. So if all you want is backup, the problem is trivial. That I totally agree with. Um, yeah, the only issue is, like, yeah, if somebody accesses my browser, but that's because I didn't do a good job of making my browser not accessible. No, someone good? runs away with your laptop. Yeah. So they, they've done that. Yeah. Now they have access to like anything on my laptop, but I don't see how using any of these programs for backing up is going to prevent them. From uh, with Tarsnap, there's no way someone can delete your backups, even if they have your laptop. The cryptographic key you get on your laptop is append only. It does not let anyone delete. So what if your sign in to Dropbox has a password? And how okay, where do you store the password? I don't store it. I know it. You I just know. remember your password to Dropbox. That suggests to me that it's not particularly secure. Yeah, it, it's pretty good. It, so you're saying you have pretty good passwords for all sites that are not reused? For Dropbox and like, like three things that have really good passwords, I just force myself to memorize them. Sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, I agree. If you're willing to like remember long passwords and feel like you're able to do them securely and you trust Dropbox, that seems fine. Okay, yeah, that's trust. So yeah. yeah, all of this comes down to security and trust. Yeah. So I'm not willing to trust anyone with anything. Yeah, uh, I think that's, that's a very right. cool. Right, uh, but, but that does make my backup strategy also more painful. Where do you all, speaking of passwords, where do you all store your passwords? I think that we were going to cover that in the security lecture, but I think like the, I think all of us use password managers. Yeah. yeah. I use the, what's it called? The Linux standard password manager. The one that's just called Pass. 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 You use pass. Yeah. I use one password. Yeah, you use And then they have like some stuff on like past, but like stuff that I want, like the scripts in my system to use without like reading like a plain text file, right? And I think that we kind of it's kind of related to that the kind of someone running away with your laptop. One thing about the encryption, same applies to kind of your hard drive. Like even if you have like a computer, like modern OS, like you have like some password to the computer. If they have like hardware access to your computer and you don't have full disencryption, they can just easily get into like some user privilege mode, override the user, and like read all your files. And nowadays it's become easier and easier. And like Mac has like file vault on like Linux, like when you're installing allows you to use looks for encryption. And like the hardware is pretty nice. Like I haven't I haven't been using this for so many years and I haven't seen any slowdowns being because of my entire hard drive. Is encrypted because another thing that you might consider like D 
the kind of the OS is doing some authorization, but it's not doing encryption of your files at all. So why don't we take a five minute break now and keep answering questions, but if anybody wants to take their break, they're welcome to. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm wondering for free to Mac uh, user, do you use Time Machine? And I guess like, do you have thoughts on Time Machine? I have used Time Machine in the past, and it was like, it was so finicky sometimes. Like it, when it worked, it was awesome. But like sometimes it was like extremely finicky. Like how would it like stop syncing up because it wouldn't couldn't find like the time password anymore. And as soon as I started kind of realizing, I only told one to like encrypt the backup. So like someone could not like delete the stuff because it gave me like to access the server and my calls and all. Like couldn't read the stuff even if, even if they got kind of my time password. Uh, I stopped using that. And Instead of like more, it's convenient. Like I think time, like kind of on being kind of some devil's advocate, it's a good solution that implements. And I think that's in the notes. It's a good solution that does the kind of the version. Like without like most kind of backup tools are mirrors, and like time capsule does give you versions. And like, that's like a really good idea of having like versions of your OS because if you like delete files, it might. Yeah, that's losing data, that's kind of the opposite of backups. So it's kind of a good solution, but still has its shortcomings. Have you ever used it? I've, I used it a long time ago, but I've switched to other tools since then. Uh, I like want data to be backed up to multiple servers, and I have a bunch of my own servers, some here, some at my house. Um, and yeah, so I don't use time, uh, time machine anymore. I think it doesn't let you have multiple backups, right? Or at least back when I used it, you could have a single time capsule, but I couldn't say like I have these five time capsules like synchronized to all of them or something. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, it's just funny because I do use time capsules, but I just run all this stuff. Like I just have like a, a like proxy server in between and just like network mount the the, the disk. But like you, you you can use like a time capsule and just a network disk and mount it onto like a Raspberry Pi, which is pretty useful. 